Alright, what's going on guys? George here, and today we're going to be working on the 240 once again. I have the same wheels on the 240 for like the last three years, and I've kind of decided I want to get something new. So I just going on Facebook, and I decided to just make an impulsive decision. I got some new wheels. These guys. And I actually got four of them instead of just two nice front ones. And you may think they're RPF ones, but they're not. They're like Chinese knockoff RPF ones, which is pretty cool. They were pretty cheap. They have a really tiny tire on a pretty big wheel, uh, which is kind of annoying. But the, uh, the real issue is that they are 5 lug, and this car is currently 4 lug. So I have new hubs, and we're going to have to go ahead and rip the hubs off of this car and then put the 5 lug hubs on. It's going to be kind of a process, um, but we'll get it done, and hopefully there will be a lot of rubbing on the entire car and it won't work nicely anymore. Let's get started with the rear. just so loose. But it's easier if you just use your hand. <laughs> got our impact here. Um, we got a 36 millimeter socket. And we're gonna pull off the uh, rear hub. Do you want to undo the brake caliper first so we can just do it all at once and be happy? Just do it now and see what happens. This? Yeah. Yeah, I want it just more. Whoa. I want to make sure it's coming off, not something else. <laughs> Nice. You don't clean the threads are right where it was. Wow. This metal hasn't seen the light of day since 1990. This isn't even that warm. That means it wasn't even that cross-threaded. <laughs> Honestly. Alright, got the caliper off. We had to finally go get the right um, 3 8 ratchet because I don't have one. This is what my 3 8 ratchet looks like. I use half inch for everything. Didn't want to fit in here, so we went and got that. Pull the cap rotor off now. And solar. Uh, we can finally try and pull the hub off by unbolting it. How am I still ratcheting this? What are you... Oh, shit, with the, with the flip-flop. Yes. Not enough teeth. What? Not enough teeth on it. I know. Paul. Not enough teeth! There's so many teeth. The factory hub's having some resistance to coming off. It seems like a little seized on. So we're going to bolt the rotor on backwards, smack the back of the old rotor with a hammer. That's an adapter. That's an interesting concept. Wow, I wish we could just drive on this. There Use you go. rotors, great shape. That was nice. Send that up. Wow, are you from NASCAR? Yes. Oh, oh, that was scary. Oh, that hole's here. Did that thing even have one? Now we're just gonna do this uh, for the purposes of. Oh god, that's so not on. I'm scared. Who knows? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's I pretend it's okay. Shit, there's something in stabbing on my foot. Find a rear brake rotor. These tires are a little more stretched than I'd like. It's a 215 and a by 9 but it's okay. We'll work our way past having them have tread on them, so we'll have to get new ones that are uh, much thicker and more aggressive size. Alright, take the screwdriver out. That's not going to clear. The saddest one, it doesn't fit. Shit. <laughs> oh, you need a spacer. Um, <laughs> I'm so upset. You don't know how upset I. This is not gonna fit. At Wait, all. no, because it's not. Because look, it's not. It's, it has a lot of positive camber right now. The hub's not. Oh, I guess they're. Imagine they're if you had your 225 or whatever you want. There's a suspension arm on it. Yeah. I just want to bolt this up. Right. With Where's what? The, where are the trying What are you those? bolting it on for? George, it looks ridiculous. Oh, it looks nicer. It definitely looks nicer. Wow. It might clear. I know it's gonna clear, George, when you have the arm on. <laughs> I hope this he's I hope this tire somehow the fender somehow makes its way in between the tire and the lip. Alright, it's finished right now. And then lower it so we can look at it. I like the no brake caliper look, it's super clean. <laughs> it is super clean. The ricer look of no rear brakes. Wow, the amount of toe out is at least eight degrees. Well also nothing is bolted up. That's true. Shit. All right, let's finish. 
So yesterday I was able to knock out both the rear wheels. The first one was a complete pain, the second one was super easy because I knew what to do. Uh, which was really nice. So we got both of them on and it looks so good. So we got the wheel on. This is a 17x9 with a 215 45 17. And honestly, cause I like pulled my fenders out to do um, to fit the other wheels with the spacers just so it would like look better. I could like do a spacer on this wheel because there's so much room there. Or I could just, what I actually want to do is just put a more aggressive tire on it because I really don't like the stretch look. Like I could do like a 245 on the back and that would look absolutely sick and be so meaty. And also, that would just feel sick too when I'm not drifting. Um, yeah, so you can just see on both sides there's a pretty big gap. Um, so now we're going to move on to the front. The front's going to be so funny because i got the extended control arms and everything. And these wheels are going to be um, wider than the wheels that I have on the car. They're going to be mounted a little differently. I don't currently have the wheel spacers I run in the front because there's some clearance issues in the tension rod. So we'll get the new wheels on um, and see how everything's fitting. And then we're going to move on from there. We might have to do some wheel spacers. And this might be the point that I have to get front fenders because I don't know if what I'm going to do is going to be even close to clearing the fender. I really don't see any way it will um, clear it. I think it's going to be a good distance out, but we're going to do it anyway and we're going to see what happens. Alright, so I got a little cover off. I can't believe how clean this thing is. This, this thing must have actually been on for the last 30 years in this car because this thing is so clean. It's amazing. I haven't seen a single bolt in this entire car that's that clean, unless this was replaced at some point. So, let's pull it apart. So I have this stuff that I'm going to replace the seals and the brake caliper because they leak really badly. Um, and the idea they need to replace, I was thinking about going to Z32 brakes, that was like a bunch of other money I didn't really want to spend right now. I got new seals for both sides for 10 bucks, so 10 bucks. and if it's pretty easy to replace the seals, that should fix the problem for now. Um, I got new rotors, so that should be fine, so... That's what I'm going to do. I kind of just want to throw the other hub on here just to see how it's going to look. I want to just bolt the wheel up, be super impatient, um, and see kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to go do that right now. So we got the front wheels on too. Um, they're really thick. I've never seen this thick of a wheel up front of my car. Um, I don't know. So it's almost, ah, it does not, nothing close to flush. So the problem is, I'm going to look at it right now to see where the tension arm is. So I think that's what the main issue is going to be. Yeah, so I think the main issue is going to be whether the tension arm is close to the tire. So this is kind of going to be the test of that. I see no way it's not because it's like, it was wheel super wide. So I think the tension arm and is going to make contact with the wheel. Possibly also even the um, sway bar could be in the way. So I just tried to uh, test fit it and it seems like the only issue, it like barely makes contact, the rim barely makes contact to the tension rod. And the issue is there's a little bit of play in the tie rod. I think it's probably because the offset rack space are kind of screwing it up. But it's like when you get the lock, it doesn't actually make contact with anything. But it's like if you pull the wheel farther, it like kind of moves inside like the ball joint and the tie rod and it just, the rim just touches the tension rod. I don't know what the best thing to do. I mean, it's like. Do I get rid of the offset rack spacer, but then the steering might bind um, and get new tie rods, maybe they wouldn't break, or maybe put a small spacer on here, but I don't, I guess I'd have to do extended studs if I wanted to do more than like five or seven millimeters, and I will figure it out. Or I could also get um, tension rods that are curved, because just another centimeter of clearance would not allow anything to rub. So I'm just going to kind of think about it, see what the best thing to do for the money would be, and then proceed from there. So you can see I just pulled the caliper apart. There's so much grime in here from just the it leaking so much. Both of the front of this at the same time. I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know if it was just random. It just so happened that as it sat this winter all the seals went bad or what but um yeah these calipers and everything just pretty this and like this is supposed to be part of the pad. So yeah we're just gonna pull everything apart. That's still draining all the fluid out so we're gonna have to bleed the brakes. I've accepted that. Um so yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and start uh, rebuilding this caliper. Pulling everything apart first, then we're going to start rebuilding it. So I'm going to go ahead and try and scrub the caliper and all the pieces with some brake fluid, try and clean them off a little bit, just so I can kind of see what I'm working with before we start pulling out the seals and putting the new ones in. So when I was trying to rebuild the calipers before, none of the seals fit in right, and I couldn't figure out why. I kind of was just like on the verge of I'm going to give up. I'm just going to go out and buy rebuilt or remanufactured calipers um, for the front of it because... I just wanted to get them on and be done with it. And they were like 40 bucks a piece, but then it turned out you like can't get the passenger side one. They're like special order and like some auto parts stores couldn't even special order it. So it was going to be like a huge pain, but I had to order them online. 
But I was just like, why don't these seals fit? So I went back to the parts where I was like, these aren't the right ones. And they're like, uh, and they looked off like, no, yeah, the right ones. So I'm like, all right. So I went to a different parts store and they're like, oh yeah, those look like anti-lock brake seals and my car doesn't have ABS. I didn't even know you could get like 8990 S13s with anti-lock brakes. I don't think I've ever seen one. But as it turns out, I had seals for an ABS car. So I went ahead, returned those, picked up the seals for a non-ABS car. These fit in perfectly. Just got done rebuilding the first caliper. Here it is. Um, Hopefully it's going to not leak fluid now, because that was really the issue I was having before, and it was leaking so much fluid, it was getting on the caliper, it was getting on the um, rotor, and the just brakes weren't really working, so hopefully this will fix that. Done one side, now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well, then before I put these on the car, go ahead and just like brake clean them down real quick, give them a quick scrub so they're clean, so when they start leaking again, because I rebuilt them improperly, I'll be able to tell really quickly. So, I can start with that right now. So I got the front wheels on, did the brakes and everything, I rebuilt them, bled them, and they're not really leaking, which is cool, and they work. That's nice. Um, I bought some spacers for the front because the front hits the tension rod and I kind of thinking I'm just going to have to go buy some angled tension rods because the inside of the lip of the rim makes contact. So I had some one-inch spacers, decided to put them on the back to be sick. Stuck them on the wheel. Let's stick it on now. Oh, yeah. Wow, fuck the lip. The back though. Don't even So we have some very close fitment back here. It's hitting the jack, but it's unreal. We drove it around like this a little bit, and you can see it does rub the tire a tiny amount. Like there's little, it's really smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smack the inside with the hammer. I really don't want it to look like this. I'd rather just have like a thick tire on it and like not have a one spacer, because like without the spacer, if I had like a square tire setup, it would just like be meaty. But instead these tires are super stretched because that's how I bought them. So, we have a one-inch space on it to make it look neat. So, take the wheel off, hit it with a hammer a bunch, and then drive around some more. Because the funny thing is that the other side doesn't rub at all, but I just think I just rolled the fenders differently before. Because I Hopefully. rolled them like three and years. Not the or the car's bent. just bent. Yeah. It's probably a mixture of both. You have thick fenders. <laughs> is it working? Yeah, I like how the, the I hadn't messed up the paint when I rolled them. And now I just messed up all the Well, you should have did it right when we started driving because it was so hot, it would have been fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the back up like three threads. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the front like six threads because how, with the tires I had before, they were like so tiny, the sidle was tiny on them. So I needed like a lot of rake for the car to sit flat. Now the tires are all for the same size. So the car just has a ton of rake to it and it kind of looks really not good. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the back up a little bit and then we go ahead and lower the front a little bit and hopefully this screws the alignment a lot and then it's bad so let's get started oh, it's five degrees more there's about 15 degrees of camera on one side of these I wow that one's broken huh it just died shit Where's Paul's impact? He has to go get the big guy with that extension cord. <laughs> Fake. So we just finished up with the wheel spacers, getting on the back. Um, I went ahead and raised the rear ride height, maybe like a half an inch, just so it'd be close to the front. And I lowered the front maybe an inch, looking at it here. And it definitely looks a lot more flat than it did before. And honestly, it might be a little bit lower on this side in the back. Just looking at them quickly. Yeah, I think this side might be a little bit lower in the back. I might have to adjust that. The alignment's a little bit messed up. Um, I had about an inch and uh, one and a half degrees of negative camber in the rear before. Now I, I think there's a little bit of positive camber, honestly, because I raised it so much. The front, the camera's still pretty messed up. I need to adjust it with the camera plates. I can do it a little bit to make it a little better. And then I have to mess with the tie rods just because it's kind of messed with the toe a little bit, I think. So... Yeah, and then the rear, it kind of towed, I think it towed itself a little bit out, or maybe, no, it definitely towed itself in, which is pretty cool. It's not that much, but it's going to mess up the tires faster than I want them to be messed up. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm really happy with it. I did not at all think I was going to put these spacers in the back. I thought they were going to go in the front, and I was like, because there was a little bit of issue of clearance with the tension rod. I think I'm going to have to go get a set of angled tension rods just so I can not have any rubbing issues up front, because it's like... I don't want to pay for them, but it's like I might as well because it's like a problem and I can't really go to full lock without 
uh, making metal to metal contact which is not going to last very long and it's not going to make me drive any better so yeah I also don't want to ruin my wheels it's just like might as well not so yeah I mean I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've made glad it's finally five log I, I got used five lug hubs that I thought were good it kind of seems like one of the wheel bearings is making noise on the right side which I'm really frustrated about but I guess it's kind of my fault because I got used ones kind of the person's fault that I bought them from because they said they were good but when you buy used stuff you never really know there's nothing you can do about it so see what happens with that it might just be the brakes like dragging a little bit but it's just it was like a noise that it's like a wheel bearing makes so we'll see but aside from that pretty much I'm really happy with how the car's looking now it finally looks like thick and not just like fake thick from having like a one inch spacer in the back of that tire but it's like look at the thick it's like, mm. and honestly it's not even like that thick of a tire it's only a 215 I'm really excited to get some new tires like once the, I wear these out or Whatever I decide to do, I might just drift on them, honestly. Because I don't like the look of the stretch at all, and it's a 215, so I could drift on that easily. I Because I want these to be like my street wheels, at least the uh, rears. I'd leave the fronts on when I went drifting, or not. But I'm really excited. I want like I want to put like a 245 on the back of it. Be like a square setup. Maybe do like a 225 or 235 up front, just so I have a little bit more clearance on like the fender and tension rod and stuff. But, like, <clears throat> that would be so cool. And like it would actually look meaty, and I could take the spacer off in the back, because the tire would actually fill that gap that is being left by the stretch, so that'd be pretty cool. I mean, we'll see what happens, see how expensive of tires I want to end up buying one day. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be driving the car on the road a lot more now that it's like looking more legitimate and it has like a good setup of tires and it's not like super sketched, unbalanced wheels I just put on quickly to drift on. Um, I'm driving around a ton more, especially with the VQ actually having a muffler now and being a little quieter. So stay tuned for all that street driving footage as well as some drifting at the track as well. I want to try and go a few more times this summer, but we'll see what happens. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.